All right, welcome back to the No Hard Feelings podcast. We're here with recording artist Michael Waves. What's up, man? Yo, what's good? Living, man, just living. How you doing? Pretty good? I'm good, man. Staying alive, staying healthy, you know? Yes, sir. We were just talking about that uh, crazy world we live in. Can't believe. I still, I don't know. I'm still, like, in shock about all this, even though, like, maybe we're on the downturn. I don't even know. I don't even know if we're on the downturn or not, but I'm still in yeah. shock about all of that. And there's fucking conflicting media reports and data everywhere. You don't even know. It's, so I always tell my friends, um, just like the past few months, I was like, it's going to be wild in like a few years down the road when we look back and they're like, hey, remember when like our country was just like a shit show? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that's, yeah, that, go ahead. No, 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 I was just saying like, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's crazy. Like, we're going to look back at this. We were saying that, I remember saying that a couple months ago, like, this is like such a crazy time to be alive. Like, yeah, like this sucks and like obviously it's a horrible time but like we're gonna look back on it and be like yeah i lived i lived through that you know what i mean <laughs> this will definitely be this will definitely be a chapter in future history books for sure yeah yeah feel, feel bad for the kids we're gonna have to study 2020 history <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah that's for sure but before we get in, into everything i just kind of want to point out um a couple of tweets that you had that i kind of think really align with what we kind of believe in at no hard feelings um just to name a few, I wrote them down. You got to eat shit before things start working. People will judge and not understand, but you need to believe in yourself and keep moving forward. And then also, uh, you have to see it when I when nobody else sees it. And you also, I saw you have a shirt that just says like "spread love," or, like "spread the love." Yeah. And we tweet yeah. that. We tweet that all the time. Like just spread the love. Oh, yeah. All oh, about yeah. all about good vibes, things like that. Like, and I think yeah. I just wanted to kind of make it a statement that like. Yeah, I found you through your music, and, like, I, I fucked with your music, but, like, I, we like to have people on that closely align with our beliefs, too. So I wanted to put that out there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, those tweets come from a place of just, like, honesty and experience. Like, you know, you're, especially, you know, you guys with the podcast and stuff, it's like, you're going after something that I would say most people in society see as, like, untraditional or, you know, whatever bullshit word you want to term it as. Um and I think it's non-traditional for a lot of people because they don't have like the grit and drive and dedication to something they believe in to try to make it a reality. So definitely try to like, you know, I try to, I guess, inspire other people to, to think that way because I feel like life is too short to not think that way, if that makes sense. For sure. Yeah. Um, you said like it's the non-traditional way. And, like people think like it's like the unsafe way or whatever, but with all of this happening, like we were just saying, like and people are getting laid off and like, I feel like this is like building like your brand, building something for yourself centered around you is like going to end up being the safer option, the more secure option. Because if you just have a job, you know, one, one revenue stream, I don't think, and then you get fired or laid off for whatever reason, a global pandemic or just economic downturn, whatever it is, then you're screwed. Yeah. Like you have no, you have no other form of income. You know what I mean? Okay. So, I mean, even along with that, like I was just talking about this. I can't remember who I was talking to. Oh, I was, I was talking to my fiance last night about this, actually. Even like along with that, I think, you know, we come from or we grew up in a generation where like we watched our parents dedicate their lives to like their nine to five grind. And like that was kind of that was kind of like what they were supposed to do. <clears throat> and I feel like it, it bleeds over into our generation where like our parents are like, hey, well, you know, you need to get a steady job and like obviously you need like a steady form of income. Like obviously you need to be like financially responsible and like, you know, not living in your parents' basement your whole life. Like I For totally sure. understand that. However, it's like, you know, we're getting to a point where like our parents and even, you know, our grandparents in the past are retired and it's like, what do they really have besides like a retirement package? Like what, what did you really get out of that? Like, what did you really get out of like the monotony of nine to five, non-valuable working for somebody else that's making millions what do you really get out of that at the end? And most likely the answer is like jack shit besides just like, whoa, that past 35 years just flew by in a blink. So it's just like, I think that that mentality is just dead and gone in our generation, especially, like I said, look, you know, looking at our parents where obviously they worked extremely hard and like, you know, having having an upbringing where you could have a nice house and be in a nice neighborhood, super grateful for that. But it's like, what did you really get? Like, as you know, looking at your parents, it's like, what did you really get out of that besides like a retirement package or like, you know, whatever. So I don't know. That's just the way I look at it. 
I've never uh, really looked at it that way. So I'm kind of glad, like you said, that on, you know, like they're always like, oh, the retirement package and this and that. And it's kind of, you know, you can go a different way with it and say, okay, I did what I loved for 35 years. Maybe I didn't make as much money, but I learned something that helped me in life or I connected with certain people yeah. and things like that that just make it even better. Totally. And it's like, even if, even if like, you know, you're doing something you love, that passion is there, in my opinion, to grow it way bigger than you could ever do it when you're working for somebody else. You know, when you're working for when you're working for you on a passion project and something you like care about, you know, the money comes with your hard work. And when you love it, it's not really like hard work. It's something you enjoy doing. So it's like I think it's a win win. It's just a it's a marathon, not a sprint. And it's so easy to just get a job you know, a safe, like nine to five, whatever, monotonous, whatever, because like, you know, okay, every two weeks, my paycheck's going to be coming in, you know, but I got this funneling out to a 401k or this, you know, all that jargon bullshit. And that stuff's important, but you can also do that with a passion project. You just, like I just said in that tweet, like you might have to eat shit. You most likely will like 99.9% .9 of the people have to eat shit initially to build up to that point where you have a much higher ceiling down the road, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think that's a good way to think about it too is like people see like these like like these young like rappers like I don't know like TJ's what like 18, 19. They're like, "Oh, like he did it. Why like I want to do like I want to make a million dollars tomorrow." Like that's like 0.01% of people that that happens to. You know what I mean? And I don't know what he did to get there that fast. Maybe it was just he was seen at the right time or what. Um I don't know. You know, I don't know everything about the music industry or how that works, but it's going to take six to 10 years. I feel like that's the time, that's the time oh. slot of when you're going to become successful or become, you know, have high income due to your passion project is yeah. six to 10 years. Yeah. As quick as you rise is as quick as you can fall. So you, you got to play the longevity game to give yourself, you know, a longevity in your career. I totally agree. I, I was just listening to uh, Joe Rogan. He said 10th year of his podcast. He's been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. You know I mean, wow. crazy. That's crazy. And obviously he got that, you know, Spotify deal for a hundred million or whatever it was, but that's Can't, after, that's after 10 years of <laughs> 10 years of doing podcasts and fit, what is it? 1500 episodes or something like that. He did podcasts before podcasts existed. I feel like, yeah, he was one of the first, he was definitely one of the first, um, if you, I've watched his like first podcast too. And like, that'll give you some perspective of like, okay. you shouldn't worry about where you start because it was like. Obviously, like technology was different, but it was like really shitty webcam quality. It was like him and I think that uh, I forget the guy's name, but it was the guy who he originally did with. And they were just like sitting together, like like super close, just talking about like literally nothing. Like it literally reminded me of our first podcast because our first podcast was dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> My song was dog shit. Like, so, it's you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to start somewhere, I feel like, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But speaking of kind of obviously like growing everything, um, I noticed that like you're pretty into branding, like on social media, everything like that. Um, it, uh, thanks for noticing. Yeah, of course. Um, you And you have that like purple heart emoji that you use all the time. So yeah. can you speak a little bit about that? Like uh, just like you, where you got that idea to like brand an emoji with you? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think something as simple as I mean, it sounds silly, but like an emoji can be a powerful branding tool. Like that's something you can be recognized by. Um, it, it came about originally, um, I put out a project last year called Purple Heart. Um, and long story short, the story behind it was uh, my now fiance, but we were just dating like this was like five, four or five years ago at this point, but we had separated and I had like, it was basically my fucking fault is basically what it boils down to. Um, yeah. and I went through like a period of like, you know, like depression and like self hate and like, you know, just not that it was like super intense, but like, I just like really didn't like myself for like a pretty long period of time. Um, and I wrote all these songs in that period of time that were all very dark. Very, all the songs that are on the project, very dark, very like, um, just like sad, emotional, expressive type songs. Um, so I, I kind of packaged them together on that project and I always found myself using the purple heart in my texts and I never really realized it until like one day I was like, I fucking use the purple heart like all the time for some random ass reason. Um, and I mean, the color purple is dope. I like purple, I guess that might've been why I used it. I don't know. Um, so I wanted to use that name cause I just thought it sounded cool. 
and I package those songs together. And if you listen to the project like front to back, um, it goes through like a story of it has like a nautical theme where like um, I metaphorically compared to like my experience ruining my relationship at the time to like a, being like a captain of a ship and I was sailing my ship. And uh, I have an interlude on there called Sailing with Sirens. And sirens are like, they're like mermaids that sing like infectious songs to like guide you to the rocks to crash your ship. And that was like kind of what I based it around where it was like falling into temptation, crashing my own ship. And then I had to survive and like, you know, figure my shit out. Um, and then I decided, I was like, oh, I still love the name Purple Heart. How, how can I incorporate this and title the project that? And I was like, well, I'll call the ship the Purple Heart. So if you look at like the cover art, um, it has the ship and it says like the purple heart there on the side. And I was like, well, this is perfect. So that was kind of like one of my first projects where I started to build a fan base, um, you know, where I had considerable fans that would always check back in, you know, fans that would buy tickets to shows and buy merch and stuff. So it kind of became like a flagship, no pun intended, like project for me. So I always use the purple heart just because it's like, and uh, I know you guys had Dylan Reese on here. Him and I, him and I actually just talked this morning. We yeah. we hop on the phone pretty frequently, and he has like the the ice cream uh, cone. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the ice cream yeah. cone. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and him and I talked about. Um, and I had him on my little like Waves Wednesday thing, but we talked about this before just privately on the phone. Um, about at at some point, like even if you don't know his music, some people are like, "Oh, you're the ice cream guy," which is mad funny. Yeah. So it's for me that was something where it's like, "Oh, you're the guy with the pur all the purple hearts all the time." You know, I have some merch items and stuff with purple hearts, and we'll have oh. you know more in the future. So it's just like, uh, it's a it's a tool to brand, and it's something that fit well, you know, with my project and the color purple. I think is tight, so it just kind of worked. Yeah, I fuck with that. I think that's uh, pretty ingenious to. I, I never thought of that until I saw you do it. I saw Dylan. And then I, I noticed you with the yeah. purple heart. And then, I don't know, maybe I just missed it with Dylan and the ice cream cone. And then yeah. I saw um, he made hats with – or he has a hat with an ice cream cone on it too, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah about that. I, think that, I think that's a great idea, though, that you thought to do that. Honestly, with our generation and stuff, everybody being on social media, texting, yeah. things yeah. like that, like emojis have become – an everyday yeah. thing in our in our life especially when everybody's on their phone so i think that's kind of cool for sure yeah i appreciate that man and, and it, it was really cool initially because like when i put the project out like like i said i had some fans funnel in and I, the cool thing was as i used it more i had fans like use it more back to me like they would send me dms like oh i love the new song purple heart purple heart and i was like oh fuck it's catching on like it works yeah, so yeah. I just ran with it yeah that's cool so yeah. how did you how did you meet dylan just wondering uh, yeah, so him and I have been friends for a couple of years. Um, we met, we were both opening on, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist Henderson. And uh, right. yeah, there's another artist named On Q. He's from Connecticut. Um, mm -hmm. And they were doing a co-headlining tour. This was like 2015 or 16, maybe. And we were both opening acts on the show. So we, we had like five shows in a row together. Um, and he like, I would go on and he would go on like right after me. Um, so it was just like being around each other and him and I have like very, we click and, and agree and kind of just like, we can have conversations without having to like explain context or anything. It just kind of flows. Cause we have very similar like thought processes with like branding and, you know, different stuff sure. like that and just kind of maneuvering and trying to, you know, make certain moves in the industry, so to speak. So we met there and then we kept in touch ever since. And now we, we hop on the phone pretty frequently and just kind of catch up. That's awesome. That's though. Cool. I've, um, yeah. I like him. He's a great guy, for sure. Yeah, dude, he's the best. Do you know, um, so if you know Dylan, do you know Ryan Podgierski? Um, I know of Ryan. I don't know if I've ever had a conversation with him, but I know, obviously, because he tour managed um, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a gr another great dude. We uh, we had him on the podcast, too, just to overall, oh, yeah, overall awesome dude to talk to. Um, Dope. Yeah. Reminded me a little bit of Dylan in the ways that he thinks to branding, marketing, you know. Yeah, dude, it's, like that. it's super important to surround yourself with people that are just like-minded so you don't have any, like, learning curve. It's just, like, you can, like, hit the ground running together. For sure, yeah. I think that's super important to, yeah, like you said, surround yourself with people who have, are like-minded or have the same goals as you. You know what I mean? They're not holding you back in any way. They're, they're supporting you. Um, so that's good. But I also noticed in your Twitter bio, you have, is that a text platform that you have? You said text me at whatever. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's pretty much like my fan number. It's not my actual phone number. Yeah. Um, like a lot of other artists, like it's a lot. A lot of times, it's bigger artists have it. Um, I've seen some like smaller scale artists um, have it as well. But pretty much like I don't know if you remember, you know, when you were younger, um, artists having like email lists and shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, and those were effective back then. But now I just feel like email lists are just kind of like spammy, and no one really. I, I personally don't think like the conversion on stuff like that is super, um, super effective. But so there's a couple of different platforms you can use for like texting your fans. So like it's it's it actually comes to my phone like a text message um, and then it sends like an automated message back and they plug their information in. And um, then I just like can text them like straight up for there. So it's cool. So it's not like I'm putting my actual number out and it's like my phone fucking blowing up all day. Yeah. Um, but it's it's cool to have like a separate you know I click on the app it's called Superphone, um, mm. and I, I click on the app and go in and I can just like it's cool because I use that number for what I call my Purple Hearts Club which is like my fan club yeah um, and pretty much like hey if you're like a super fan like text this number plug your information in you know when I announce tour dates I'll send like the ticket links out first to to the phone number I'll send like um you know music videos or new songs that like aren't out quite yet i'll like set them to private and then send the link out to them before you know a couple That's days cool. before it drops so it's cool and it's cool to just like chop it up like i had like, long car rides i'll send a text out to like all my fan numbers in there and be like yo like what up i got like two hours in the car like would love to chat with some of you guys and then i'll just call fans and just be like yo like how's life and you know are you rocking with the new music or what do you have going on just kind of be like a regular person you know yeah dude that's yeah cool. dude that's cool. i think that's thank you like calling your fans or like saying like hey like hit me up when you're on like that's that's so like i don't know that's crazy to me that i wouldn't have even thought of that and i think that's pretty genius like your fans are literally getting like to have a conversation with you like just super personal super like they, they're gonna feel like they know you after that conversation you know what yeah. i mean I mean, like as an artist in today's day and age, like with social media being such, you know, the cornerstone of everything, connection with your fans and building a fan base, you got to make it seem like to build a, a core fan base that supports you, buys your merch, comes to shows, not just like passively streams your music, but are like real fans is you got to like, they have to feel like they know you and they have to actually like get to know you, you know, so like mm -hmm. conversations that shows and then, you know, if I'm not touring, especially now, it's like, I'm not touring, so it's like I can't go to cities and meet them. So it's like talking on the phone and texting just like a normal person. And it's really cool, too, because, like, fans support my music. And, like, I have some close friends that don't really support my music. And there's, you know, strangers that are fans that support my music more than, like, people that I'm, you know, friends with or whatever. Yeah. So it's always cool, like, because I'm super appreciative of it. Like, I mean, I turned the clock back a few years, and, like, I didn't have anything at all. And, like, you know, I low confidence level and you know thinking about giving up and different things so it's i'm super appreciative to have any fan base at all and it's like i want to let them know that like all the time and i like i respond to all my dms and shit so it's like yeah i'm, I'm just appreciative of it i feel like that shit gets lost like i get so many responses like oh my god i didn't think you'd hit me back and it's like why wouldn't i hit you back like you're texting <laughs> And saying like, "Yo, I I fuck with the new song, or I showed my song to three of my or your song to three of my friends." It's like, of course, I want to thank you for that. Oh, for sure, that must be like such a cool feeling to like, like you said, like yeah. random ass people like you've never met, but they like they're diehard fans of you. They buy your merch. They want to text you. They want to have a conversation with you. Must yeah. be a cool feeling. Yeah, it's awesome. So you're currently in Lancaster, PA, correct? Yeah. Yep. So did you did you grow up around there? Uh, I grew up like half an hour from here. It's a town called Lebanon. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. So I, I was born there, but so I went to like high school and shit there. And then I went to college over here in Lancaster. And um, I've been here ever since. So like the past, I don't know like how long it's been, like, I don't know, like seven years or, you know, whatever it's been since um, college. So yeah, I've been in, I kind of consider Lancaster my hometown, even though I wasn't born here. Like, the most like formative years of my life I feel like have been here the most like um I don't know it's when I you know started making music and yeah. you know met met my friend group that I have now I've been in Lancaster so for sure so is that's is that a that's not a big city is it either of those places it's it's not like a big city I mean like a lot of people when you think of Lancaster you think Amish people like you see that shit like I, all over yeah. yeah so it's like Amish country is like that's just like outside like Lancaster County definitely like 
a lot of like farmland for like Amish people and stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's a Lancaster City, which is actually super dope. It's probably, I mean, in my opinion, it's like the third biggest touring market in Pennsylvania. Like people come through Pittsburgh, Philly, and Lancaster is also, um, excuse me, a pretty, a pretty popular stop because they have a couple of music venues in the city that, you know, they're like seven, 700, 500 cap venues. So they're pretty good size. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. When, uh, when did you start making music? Um, I started probably like eight or nine years ago at this point. That and goes back grind. to my, yeah, it goes back to my thing, like <laughs> six to 10 years, man. I feel like that's, you know, that's the, that's the amount of time it takes to really get there. And like, I feel like you're just start, you're starting to break through and you're start you have, like you said, you have that follower base. You know what yeah. I mean? I think you're only going to go out from here, but yeah. so you said you it's start, eight, nine years. You start while you were in college. Say that one more time. Sorry, you broke up a little. Um, so you started you started when you were in college? Yeah, I did. So I started college in 2000, what was it? The fall 2009 and 2010. Um, so I started back then, like, I wrote poetry in high school because I had to do it for, like, a, my senior year. There was, like, an assignment in English class where I had to write a poem. Like, I never had written a poem in my life. And I remember sitting down yeah. and... Uh, it, it's so cliche because I remember the assignment it was like writing a poem about love which is like I feel like the most generic like topic to write a fucking poem about um, but I remember sitting down to write it and it was just like for some reason rhyming words was just like so easy like I didn't even need to try like you know if I if I had that poem I wish I still did if I had that poem and read it back like I would probably be like shitty ass like basic rhymes but like at the time like I was like whoa like rhyming words is like super easy so I just like kind of kept doing that and then starting college that's when like drake kid cuddy big sean first started to pop off like mac miller um like the frat rap w wave like asher roth and those guys sammy adams they were they were kind of in full effect at that time so i was like shit like i'm gonna start writing music and it was like complete trash um but you know <laughs> like started in started in college i didn't even know how to record myself I, I have like it's actually over here in this closet i have like a spiral bound notebook just full of like shit i used to write because i didn't know how to like record myself whatsoever um but uh yeah that's it's been a fucking it's been a journey for sure that's crazy yeah um you're talking like the frat rap like mac miller type stuff um i remember yeah. like listening to that i had i have cousins that are like four to six years older than me so when i was in like probably like sixth or seventh grade they were listening to that and they yeah. showed me mac miller and i was like the only kid in my middle school that listened to mac miller and like everyone thought i was fucking like weird or something and they were like oh what is this like i don't even know like what kind of mis music was like cool when i was in middle school but i was listening yeah. to mac miller which was just kind of funny yeah no you you caught him uh you caught him early yeah and i i give all credit to my cousins for that because they i think he was like he I, I live in Buffalo and he was coming to Buffalo, I think, for a concert and they were all going. And I was like, yeah. Oh, who who's Mac Miller? And then they showed me. And I've been a Mac, Mac big Mac head ever since. Oh, that's so tight. Yeah. Buffalo. I, I, I should have guessed by the, the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, Bill you Mom, you're, out here, you're out here body slamming tables and shit. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I played Buffalo. <laughs> I played Buffalo in February, I think, of this year. It was the first time I played Buffalo, and it was it was oh, awesome. Really? It was like a small show. Yeah, it was like we had like what? fifty. It was like a smaller show at a. It's called Stamps, so it's like just north of Buffalo, like Stamps the bar. Um, Wait, is that is that in Tonawanda by any chance? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's near my house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, so I played Buffalo, and it was so tight. It was like a small show, but it was super rowdy. I loved it. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, that's um, is that like this a that was this February? Yeah, it was. Um, I'm trying to think when exactly it was. I play. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna look up. I think it was this past February, I believe. That's crazy. you Jordan was in Buffalo too, then. Yeah. Yeah, we're 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 right there. Should have pulled yep. That's so tight. Yeah, next time I play Buffalo, I have to hit you guys up. You have to come through. January nineteenth is when it was. Damn. Oh, yeah, January nineteenth. Yeah. Hit, oh, hit that's that's literally the weekend we came back. Yeah, that was the first week because we go to school in Buffalo, and oh. uh, that was the first week we were back on campus oh, from, nice. for the spring semester. Yeah, but nice. yeah, hit us hit us up when you are uh, 
when you play in Buffalo again. We got we have a vlog, so we'll we'll, we'll burn the vlog and everything like that. Yeah, sure. so that would be dope as fuck. So do you um, what other what other shows have you played? I don't like just you were just touching on like yeah. playing Buffalo, but um, any other notable notable uh, shows? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So, like, t- a touring is something, like, I focus heavily on. It's just, like, I think the best way to build fans most efficiently, build a fan base most efficiently, because you get to, like, have physical conversations with people. Um, and I just think they connect with your music in, like, such a, a deeper way that way. Um, mm-hmm. So I toured, I started touring pretty early, probably before I should have been touring. You know, I, I was touring cities where I had, I know I had new, I knew I had no fans, like I had no experience there. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go play shows there. And then like obviously started to build fan bases, like small pockets of fans. Um, But I played like Philly, Pittsburgh. This past tour, um, I toured with a homie of mine, Jerome. Um, We did like a co-headliner. We played um, my hometown, Lancaster, Philly, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and uh, Toledo, Ohio. That's sweet. Uh, Yeah, so that, that was a fun run. Like I played D.C., uh boston i played uh south burlington vermont which was like, like my favorite place to go it's That's beautiful sweet. there yeah, yeah yeah um new york city i'm trying to think where else like i played a show in connecticut um just wherever like just trying to trying to spread the fan base man for sure yeah so how, how crazy is tour life uh, uh it's kind of like a mixed bag dylan and i were just talking about this actually um tour life is cool like in it's super rewarding when you get to talk to people that are your supporters. Um, I think that's my favorite part. Um, you know, like the, the hour and a half after a show when you're at the merch table and, you know, people get to come up and, you know, say, Hey, like I'm a big fan. And they kind of say, you know, their life story. Like I've had people just say like the connections are fucking crazy. Like there's, you would never expect it. Like when I'm going into cities where, I know I might have some fans or I know, or or I'm like, I don't even know if I have fans here. You're just kind of going in blind. It never fails. It's like, there's people that show up and they're like, I've been a fan since this, you know, this project or this song. And, you know, uh, I was at a dark place in my life and, you know, your music helped or this show has kind of, you know, helped me get to a better place. And all that kind of stuff is the, like, there's no word to describe it. It's fucking rewarding even um, you know i'm a smaller artist right now so it's like that's not happening in like you know thousand you know thousands of people showing up or anything but it's super rewarding in that sense but it's like the most stressful it's like the most stressful fun time ever it's you know it's you're driving long hours you're eating shitty fucking food you're carrying heavy ass equipment every night And in my, you know, in my case, like I don't have a tour bus. I don't even have like a sprinter van or anything. Like I'm whipping around in my fucking SUV. And uh, so it's like, you know, I'm putting the wear and tear on my car, paying for gas, paying for lodging, you know, getting to cities where I'm carrying all the equipment in, helping with setup, setting up the merch table. I'm I'm, like pretty hands on with a lot of shit um, just because I care so much about it. It's not necessarily like I don't trust anybody. It's just like I want to make sure it's exactly how I want it. You know, maybe that sounds fucking particular but i don't really give a shit like that's if it's my show and my branding i want things to be you know how i want them to be so fans get the best experience possible like even if it's a 12 dollar ticket that's someone's hard-earned money that they work their job to earn that they're going to spend coming to see me you know rap and sing on stage like i want to give them the best experience ever um so it's it's really it's a pain in the ass all that bullshit but it becomes so rewarding when like i said you can meet the fans and watch your fan base grow um, throughout that whole process but i mean it's fun I, I don't mean to sit here and like complain about it it's, it, it's stressful but it's so fun at the same time yeah well you know, i i, I want I, I just i i see like a trend and dylan kind of said the same thing about touring. like you guys love it like it's like it's it, it lives up to the hype but then there's yeah. that that background sorry that you know that not everybody sees that's the hard work and sweat you put in yeah. the head that fun time and make those moments um, and that's what Ryan was saying. He said that the big, the best thing he loves about tour are the moments, you know, you always remember, you always remember when you're in this city and you guys, something happened. And he said he yeah. was seeing, you know, crazy people walking the streets. It's just stories you get to tell when you get older, especially. In, yeah, you know, totally. Like when you're independent, you're not having like any type of major funding behind you. It's like, everything's out of pocket and it's like, you're trying to like, 
I'm obsessed with professionalism and trying to make sure like, you know, everything is good to go. I'm, I'm places on time and I'm making good impressions on people, not being a dickhead um, and shit like that. So it's, it's, it's tough because, you know, I don't have stage hands to like carry gear. I don't have like, like I said, I don't have a tour bus or like a driver or, you know, I'm, I'll be lucky if a friend is like, yo, I'll come along and just drive. I'll be like, fucking thank you. Like, I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm driving and then like, you know, playing a show, you know, it's, it's exhausting. But, you know, like I said, it's those moments that you have, whether it's like with fans or whether it's just like, you know, you're there with your crew and like you have a fun ass night. Those are the moments where like all the bullshit doesn't matter. For sure. Yeah. I wanted to get back to like you were saying like you set up like the merch table. You like you, you're pretty hands on. And yeah, I think that's super like it's that's your name. Like you're putting your name out there. You're you're actively trying to like get new fans, get people to, you know, listen to you. I think that's important how hands on you are. And I think um, like even if like fans that you have now are listening to this, like they're going to realize to a whole different level how much you care about your fans. And I think that's pretty commendable. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like everything you roll up to a venue, like even if I play Stamps the Bar in Buffalo or Tonawanda, you know, yeah. let's say I roll up there, fans come out and, you know, maybe one thing actually I encountered a lot on my last tour, um, it was the Nightmare After Christmas tour, the one with Jerome. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, like the guys that would run sound would play the most random music like as people were walking in and like it's pretty much like when there's no one playing it's just kind of the in-between music Mm -hmm. and would play like like fucking like folk and bluegrass and like what i guess it's whatever they liked and it was just like it didn't match at any in any point like the vibe of the show so it got to a point like i made a playlist i'm like and i would go up and i would say here's my phone Here's the playlist. You guys are only playing this selection of songs while people come in. Cause it's like, if people walk into Stamps the Bar in Buffalo and there's some like, and they're, you know, if they're coming to see me, they're a fan of like, you know, hip hop or pop or EDM or, you know, whatever genre you want to call me, they're not going to like, they're going to walk and listen to like folk music and be like, what the fuck? And they're not going to say like, oh, this venue's weird. They're going to say, yeah, we're at that Michael Wave show and they're playing like folk music. It was weird. They associated with your brand and you. So yeah. it's like, I just want to prevent I, the word for it really is I want to prevent any leakage. I don't want any leakage in any way. So people don't get negatively affected or have any like, whoa, this is weird. Or, I didn't really understand this. Like I want them to come to a show then even the music in the background, you know, or even making sure the venue like isn't hot, like make sure the air is at a certain, you know, it's like people come in and they're, they're comfortable. They're in the mode to fucking rage at one of my shows. They have a killer time. We have a great conversation and it's like a win-win. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's really important. Like you said, like you you dot all your eyes and cross all your t's. Like nothing yeah. is left uh, nothing's left to question. Uh, yeah. When it comes to a show with you, and I think that's that's important. You know. Yeah. And like you said, people are paying even if it's a twelve dollar ticket. They they work for that twelve dollars, and they're spending it to go see you. So you want to give them the best experience possible. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, things start at the smallest levels. Like you look at superstars now, like they played venues where they're playing for like, you know, 100, 150 cap rooms and small crowds. And that's how they built that core fan base is they gave them ex- that experience that makes them want to tell their friends and come back. And that's how it snowballs. For sure. So kind of um, moving more into like your music in general, who like where do you find your influence uh, music wise? uh i mean definitely when i started out like some of the names i mentioned earlier like i was a huge drake guy when drake first dropped strictly because i watched the show degrassi which might be weird that i'm (laughs) doing that but um yeah i watched degrassi so when drake first came out like even before he was with like young money and stuff like um like room for improvement mixtapes and like comeback season like early drake i knew like i knew of it so i became a fan of him and definitely influenced by his music um guys like kid cuddy definitely like as much as I hate to admit it, like obviously the frat rap, you know, wave of guys when they first came out, just because I'm like, oh, like pretty much like college white guys are rapping. I'm a college white guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like definitely influenced by those guys, Kanye West, um, guys like Mike Posner. I was a big, I'm, I'm, I am a big fan of. Um, but yeah, so like pretty much those types of guys, Big Sean, like I said, Kanye, like 808s and Heartbreaks, Kanye, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, Kanye was like, there's some of my favorite albums. Mm-hmm. That's cool I though. That's I love that album. I love oh, that man, it's album. crazy. Yeah, I think um you said you hate to admit it, but like you like like the frat rap or whatever. And I 
Yeah. I saw, I don't know, maybe I was just like deep into some like replies on Twitter or something. Like people were like, oh, like I loved Mac, but that frat rap wasn't it. And I was like, well, obviously, like, I don't know. I feel like if you grew up listening to like that kind of music, or like if you like, if you like were into Mac right when he came out, like that was, that's kind of like, that's my childhood anyway. Like yeah. the frat rap, Mac Miller, that's my childhood. So I still listen to that sometimes. You know what I mean? It's music. It, you like music, and this is my opinion, but I, I think a lot of people would probably agree with it. You like music because it takes you back to whatever place in your life you were, and you associate yeah. those memories with that music. So it's like, you know, for me, Mac, Asher Roth, uh, you know, Sammy Adams, Chris Webby, like that shit makes me think of when I was in college, you know, like the fun loving, like free ass, you know, party ridden time that college was. Like, so you, you like that type of shit. Obviously, now, because like frat rap has kind of come and gone. You know, mm-hmm. people can be like, oh, well, that frat rap wasn't it. It's like, well, when it was hitting, like, everybody liked it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, I mean, like, but obviously, like, that tweet, like, that that guy obviously, like, just didn't listen to it or whatever. Or maybe he didn't just didn't like it at the time, but obviously he yeah. wasn't he wasn't in when, when that was, like you said, everyone listened to that kind of stuff. My bad. I just spilled coffee on myself. <laughs> Hopefully not hot coffee. Thank God I have a black shirt on. We're good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, so I think, I think that's important though, to share like who you grew up listening to. Like, that's why I like to ask that question. Like we've obviously had Dylan on, like I asked him that question too, because like, if I, if I was listening as a fan of yours, um, I would want to know that information. Like, obviously like the, the artists that I like, I like to know like where they're getting their sounds from. Like sometimes like, and it's people you wouldn't even expect sometimes. Um, so I think that's super interesting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's. I got into music pretty late. Like, even when I was in high school and stuff, I only would ever listen to, like, what was on the radio. Um, I wasn't into music whatsoever, which is so hilarious to look back on because now it's, like, the central focal point of my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, early Drake, like, even Take Care is my favorite Drake album. Like, I know people might hate on that selection, but Take Care, Drake, um, you know, both Man on the Moons by Cuddy, just, like, when when melody started to become when melody and like vulnerability started to become like a cornerstone of like what popular rap was at that time i was a big fan of that for sure i think uh yeah yeah i like i don't know i don't want to get into my opinions on drake because i've defended it a million times but he doesn't like he doesn't not, okay. like drake. not that i don't uh, he said he's fine. a good artist people just don't like him i just yeah. don't like music is subjective that's so true but like it's part of the two half for Jimmy. i guess that's yeah that's it no like he's just not in my top five you know what i mean like if i had to pick five people to listen to like dylan asked me if i picked five people to listen to who would it be it's just not gonna be drake so who who would they be oh he asked me this too so i would say mac and i would say probably half half of my top people aren't even rap like so i would say mac miller um j cole um and then we get into like i like the i like oasis from the 90s i like the yeah. smiths from the 80s um but that's timeless shit though i can't i can't disagree with that yeah yeah i mean that's why I, I didn't really start getting into rap until like i got to college i mean in high school i was all alternative 90s you know rap. i th- those are the only concerts i went to my first rap concert was j cole my sophomore year of high school you know what i mean <laughs> that's the type. yeah but yeah, no, I mean, obviously, I respect Drake for everything he's done in the music industry. I, I was literally, I listened to a Drake song today behind bars. I was working out and listened to it, but like, That's so, so funny. <laughs> but um, he's, he's good. I'm, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he's a bad artist. Obviously, like, obviously, yeah. he's like top of the game. Like everyone loves Drake. Yeah, I, just, I mean, like, dude, I'll never argue with anybody that like might not like the music I like or I might not like the music they like. It's all subjective, like. I experienced that even with my own shit. Like, I'll put out songs that, like, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I'll put out um, because why would I not put it out? Even if I'm not the hugest fan of it, I the people have been like, this is my favorite song. And I'm like, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'm glad, you know, you like it. It's all subjective. Like, I yeah. like Drake. You don't like Drake. I put out songs that I might not like or I might really like, and fans are like, oh, this is okay, but it's not it. And it's like, well, I think it's great. It's all subjective. Like, you can never... Yeah. You can never pin somebody down because of that. It's all subjective. Well, yeah, I think you can't, like, especially, like, obviously, I don't make music, so, like, tell me if I'm wrong, but 
you can't totally decide like if like a song is going to be a hit or not. Like I feel like the market will speak. You know what I mean? No. Like I definitely have songs like even in my vault right now that I'll be putting out like later this year and top of next year that like have the potential and like I'm like I love this song and like when I made it I felt really good about it and I think I performed well on it and you know I think fans could really connect with it but like you never know like you could put out a song that you think is your biggest hit and it could dud out you could put out a song that you might not have even wanted to put out and it could hit like Russ talks about that a lot I'm a, I'm a fan of Russ and especially yeah. his mentality and shit um and his mindset and he talks about that all, all the time even in his most recent interviews um he'll talk about just like there's songs that like i made them but i'm not the biggest fan of them and you don't know what's going to hit so i'm going to put it out and he's had songs that he at one point was like uh like i'll scrap this put it out and be you know hits yeah are you uh are you a gary v guy by any chance uh like passively like i like gary v um he's like he just he has new content like it's hard to even like kind of keep up with you know all his yeah. stuff he has so much coming out like definitely a fan of his in terms of just like it's work ethic like there's no like there's no magic equation to make shit happen and make you pop off it's just like you know you're ten thousand hours and more like you just got to put in that work and you got to right. put yourself in the position to you know there's in my opinion there's no such thing as luck in any whether it's the music industry or any industry you're trying to like you know make a living in that's you know, a passion driven thing or a non non traditional thing. Yeah. Like there's no magic equation to get it to happen. There's no luck. There's literally you just gotta be prepared, bust your ass, and then, you know, a situation will come along that it'll click for you. For sure. Yeah. I wanted to ask you because I know like you have the text platform and like he was Gary V was the first time I ever heard of like a texting platform. And uh, then yeah. you mentioned Russ and I know him and Russ are tight and everything like that. So yeah. um yeah, I think he's got a lot of good advice. Like you said, like he puts out so much though. It's like I'll go like I'll I'll go like a month of like watching like all of his videos and then like I'll be like doing my own shit, like, you know, practicing what he's preaching type thing and to kind of do yeah. my own thing for a while and then if I'm you know I'll even go back to his videos if I'm like losing motivation, like ah like I don't wanna do this. I'll watch a Gary Vee video just to like yeah. get myself back up, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to like, I do that shit all the time. Like I'll wake up and like be in a shit mood, shit mood for no reason or like be feeling unmotivated for some odd reason. And like I listen to a guy, I don't know if you know who Ed Milet is. He's kind of like in that same space. Yeah. Um, he has really good content. Like I'll watch Russ interviews or like put a podcast on in the background. Like that shit's powerful. It's like I compare it to like, and I'm using like a fuckload of metaphors throughout this, I just noticed. But like I compare it to like, you know, your body's healthy when you put good food into it. Your brain is healthy when you feed it, you know, good stuff for your mindset and your attitude and, you know, confidence and stuff like that. It's the same thing. Right. Definitely. I think that's super important. Like I have days like that all the time where I wake up, I just like just in a horrible mood. Like, I don't know what it was. Maybe like, like literally for no reason, like you said, and like, you gotta like, I hate it. I do. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like I've, that's like a lifelong thing for me to try to figure out like why, like it'll just be like a random Wednesday and I'll wake up and it's just like horrible for some reason. Like I got to like fix that really quick or like it's yeah. going to be a bad day. <laughs> I mean, I've even had times where like, and it's like everybody goes through it. Like everybody wakes up in shit moods for no reason, but I'll, I'll even like stare in the mirror and I'll be like, you bitch, like stop being a <laughs> bitch and just like fucking get over whatever's pissing you off for no reason. And yeah. 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 Jared yeah. said that to himself all the time. Stop being a bitch. Yeah, I say that. I do say that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> talking to yourself is healthy. I think. I think it's very. I. I. Yeah. I've definitely been caught talking to myself, with, by like, and people just look at me weird, and I'm like, ha, ah, whatever. Like, <laughs> it helped me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But I think that's healthy, and yeah, I don't know. But I always hate that. It's like you said, it's the worst. You wake up and there's no reason, not even no reason at all, and yeah. you're just automatically flooded with bad thoughts or whatever but yeah. like you said a podcast or a video whatever works for you whatever speaks to you just find that and yeah you know. meditation that's good meditation gratitude journals stuff like that vision vision boards you know yeah some people like i i don't know how you like you, your guys parents are but like i definitely come from a family where that's kind of like weird shit like when i like not that I meditate like every day, I definitely should do it more. And I feel like this is like the eighth interview I've ever done where I'm like, I should meditate more and I still haven't. Um, <laughs> you know, if I'm in like a real shit mood, I'll definitely take like five, 10 minutes and sit down and put on like a guided meditation. But like my family always be like, 
you're meditating that's why are you doing that like what's wrong with you it's like okay you obviously <laughs> have no clue what the fuck you're talking about but yeah well the shit's not you ain't kidding they like they i do everything. yep i'll even do like yoga sometimes like in the morning because I, th- I feel like that just like clears your head you know what i mean and that yeah. goes back to whatever whatever works for you what did you say jordan <laughs> I said, fuck yoga, bro. I yoga. tried yoga one time. And that shit was ass. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't... I've done yoga like once. And so I'm just like, I can't stretch for shit. I just feel like I'm going to tear everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely parts of yoga where you're like, it's really hard. Like, it's hard. Like, it's like, yeah. it can be a very, like, a hard workout. But yeah. they have, like, a part at the end where, like, you, like, just, like, lay there. I forget what it's called. It's some, like, I don't know. It's like some foreign um, name. Like, it's, what's that? I must say. Or is that? No, I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> you know, whatever. It works for you. Fuck it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, obviously, like, like Jordan, like, I know, like, you hate yoga, but, like, it works for me. And, like, I don't know what, what you do, but it works for you. Like, when, what, when I'm, like, when I need to, like, relax or something? Or, like, you're just in a shit mood. Like, what do you do? Shit, mood. What I do, I get on Warzone and drop dudes. <laughs> no, I mean, um, it depends. I mean, listening to music's always good. I mean, you know, I I like to freestyle, so if I always got something to say, throw, throw on a beat and I'm gonna say it. Nice. Um, yeah, I love freestyle. It's also, so I've I got into music um, freshman year, so. It's actually hilarious. So we we got to college. We all met each other um, through baseball and stuff. And we got pretty close. And I don't know how it happened, but one night someone was like, oh, let's like throw on like the instrumental. And I was like, I've never freestyled before. Yeah. And we just kind of did it and started doing it and doing it. And like ever since that day, we've been like making music, freestyling, trying to make beats. Like my one of our buddies makes beats. And we just like record at school and things like that. So it's been it's been cool because I've gotten into music and it's kind of cool to talk to you and Dylan. Um, yeah. And it was just it's just pretty cool. I love it. I love it. But I I love freestyling because you have to get so creative and it's just you have to be so pinpoint. It's like yeah, it's just, you gotta be you gotta be like on your shit. Like I I don't consider myself a good freestyler in any in any like. For some reason, I guess just like making, you know, being a rapper or, you know, a musician that, you know, dabbles in like the rap space, like people always, oh, you're a rapper? Can you free- just freestyle? Like I'm some sort of like circus act, like I'm just going to like fucking yeah, you're just gonna- style for change or some shit. But like people, it that's just like difficult though. It's like you, I always like I'll start off with like half of a written verse to like kind of kickstart me to, you know, but it's it's hit or miss, man. Freestyling is no joke. Yeah, so I, I never... Like we always, we, when we started doing it, my buddy, uh, who was also heavily into music, he's actually trying to do it full time now, and he's like, "You should try writing." And I was like, "Nah, like I like freestyling, like it's just fun." And he was like, "No, try writing." So then I started writing, and it's just, it's awesome. Like I love it. I, it's so much fun. I have the, uh, it's called the rhymer's block. It's like the note thing, and it, like. Sometimes when you're stuck on a word, I'll show you a bunch of other words you can use and oh, cool. spend writing every time I got to think of a song or I hear a beat or something. I just write on it. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you were saying earlier, like rhyming words came easy to you. I don't I yeah. honestly don't think I could come up with two words that rhyme right now. We, we play this game. So we all sit in my car at night and we play this game called like two bars game so you say two bars on a beat then the next person goes and we go all the way around the car yeah Yeah, and we go as long as we can and like some nights we'll be going you know 10 15 20 minutes that's tight that's that's fun yeah it's a lot of fun yeah it like freestyling like 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 you like i've seen jordan freestyle like for like six seven minutes like my brain just doesn't work like that like i i excel at some things but like that something like that would just never work for me. Yeah, <laughs> it is, man. I don't know rhyming words. I don't know what goes on in your brain that makes people be able to kind of like catch catch a flow and be good at it. But I don't know, man. 
Don't feel bad. If you can't rhyme words, don't beat yourself up about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's all right. I'm not. I'm not too upset about it. <laughs> but um, I know you mentioned earlier, kind of switching gears a little bit, that Waves Wednesday that you do. Yeah. Um. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um. I mean, so once that basically once uh once corona hit and everybody was in quarantine and stuff and touring got canceled like i basically i got an email from my like i didn't i didn't really even know how serious it was i don't think really anybody kind of knew how serious it was when it first started to happen yeah. and remember i got an email from my agent and he was just like yo touring's a wash until at least the fall and now it's you know past that it's probably pr pretty much the rest of the year but i remember getting that email and I was, I remember telling my fiance, I was like, hey, my agent just emailed me and said like touring's a no-go for at least the next like four or five months. And I was like, damn, like shit's fucking serious. So it's like, I have a bunch of extra time where, you know, I'm writing music and stuff like that and, you know, recording and, and doing like, you know, all that kind of stuff, but not playing any shows. I was like, I need some way to like, just have another another piece of content coming out um another way for fans to engage and get to know me you know instead of just like listening to my music obviously you get to know me you know on a certain level like that but i wanted something where because i i think i hold a conversation well and i can talk to, even if i it's a stranger like i feel like i can still have a comfortable conversation without being like awkward as shit or anything for sure um, so i was like i'll start like a podcast type thing um so i just because I didn't have like a microphone or anything like I, I now like I just redid this whole room I'm sitting in like two days ago and I have like a podcast set up now where I'll do some like in-person stuff, which would be cool. But I was like, I'll just do join Instagram lives. I'll just do that and I'll call it, I'll do it every Wednesday and call it Wage Wednesday. That's um, cool. So I started doing that. I did, I think I did like six or seven episodes so far. Um, it becomes a little hectic to do it every week along with all the music stuff. So mm -hmm. Um, it became like a bi-weekly thing, you know, not too long ago. And then since I rebuilt this room, um, I kind of like put a hiatus on it until I like figure out how to use the mics, which is what I was actually doing before we hopped on this call. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's going to come back as like a full scale thing called Waves Radio. Oh, um, cool. So it, it won't necessarily pigeonhole me into every Wednesday because like sometimes it sucked where it was like, you know, I'm getting dinner with somebody. And I'm like, fuck, it's Wednesday. Like, I can't do this or whatever. It became like kind of a, a bitch scheduling wise. So yeah, being waves radio, I'm not pinning it to only Wednesday, which would be cool. Um, and I want to have like, I want to have some podcast where I might not have a guest. Like, I, you know, it's just me talking the whole time or I have somebody like in, in studio um, having a conversation. So yeah, it was a cool thing. Like I said, just to take up extra time I had um, and like, it's a cool way to just like hear people's stories and have good conversations, valuable conversations with like-minded people. Like I've had, I had, I think it was just musician. I had all musicians on so far. And then one of my buddies, he's a magician. Oh, cool. um, and, but it's like, it's all stuff where they're chasing passions and they're following their dreams and they're believing in themselves. And I can, I don't think there's, there's never a limit on that type of content that, th that can be put out. Cause there's so much value in that for so many people. And I've already, I've gotten fans literally off of watching Waves Wednesday, which was so, it's so random where they're like, yo, I, I tuned in to Waves Wednesday with so-and-so and I love what you had to say. Like, I, you know, I love, you know, the content you guys are putting out. And I was like, all right, hell yeah. So I just kept rolling with it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I wanted to touch on something you said, like scheduling became difficult because you were like, um, you were tied to Wednesday. And yeah. I think like, like. I'm sure Jordan can attest to this too. Like something that, that's something that we struggled with. Like the week before this week, we put out three podcasts, and then this past week, we put out no podcasts. Like it's yeah. hard to like have that set schedule. And I mm -hmm. feel like maybe it would be beneficial to have like okay, we upload like Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, or whatever. But like yeah. it's it's hard to keep to that schedule or like keep that one day open because then things come up and then you miss that day and then you're like, oh well, shit. Like I have to wait till next week now or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea to set a schedule like that or not, because I feel like if you do set a schedule, then it's so much pressure and maybe things will even seem like forced because you're like forcing yourself to do it on that yeah. specific day. Or is it better to just do it when you have the time or want actually want to do it and the show is going to be better and everything like that? Yeah, I think it's a good idea to stockpile. And that's I was actually I was hanging out with my one, one my one buddy. I can't talk my one buddy yesterday. His name's Alex, mm -hmm. uh, but he he has a podcast as well. 
and uh, he was like, yeah, it's a good idea. Like, get like three under your belt before you release any of them, so you always have one to kind of fall back on. So it's not like you know whatever Wednesday or whatever day is coming up, and you're like, shit. Well, I was supposed to do this, but I have this podcast thing. So yeah. You know, screw your schedule that way. But yeah. That's a good idea. I wish we did that before <laughs> before we started because yeah. it's it's hard to get ahead of the game. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's cool though. I think that's interesting. You're adapting with everything that's going on. Um, yeah, I think and that's really cool. Your- Podcasting is so fun. Like I enjoy, I enjoy having conversations with people that are like like minded and about like you know passion driven stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's cool to be able to like. Even I texted my dad this morning. I was like, hey, like, I want to have you on my podcast. Just, like, it's cool to, like, ha- I just feel like a sit-down conversation doesn't happen much anymore. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe as old school as that sounds, but, like, there's a real value in that. And, like, you know, the guests that I've had on my podcast and people I'll talk to, like, I've learned a lot. There's a lot of value in it. Um, and I just, it's, like, it's so enjoy. it's so nice to just sit down and like have a conversation and like be you know it's i'm not looking at my phone or you know whatever it's like i'm diligently like listening to what somebody has to say and they're doing the same yeah for sure like it's hard to come by these days i feel like especially with the media like if you interview someone like they'll be like okay i ask you this question you got 30 seconds to answer that we got to move on because we got to go to commercial or whatever something stupid like that and how many times are you having a conversation with somebody and they're sitting there like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like they're they're responding to you, but they're looking at their phone or whatever. So it's it's a nice thing. It's it's refreshing. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. It's refreshing. Right. And yeah, we're com- grateful to be able to, you know, have the ability to do something like this. I mean, when we first started our podcast, we were both saying, you know, it, it's, it's convenient that Skype allows you to record the call. Or, and we were talking about just in general, it's cool that, we have technology in times like this when you really can't go out and meet person to person or yeah. go somewhere and meet in a studio. And it's like, you know, we can still have these conversations. You know, we learn things from you. We learn things from other people that we have podcasts with. And it's just, it's just cool, you know, especially when the world's not going the way it is. Conversation could always help. Absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. I think like podcasting, obviously, like, I feel like everyone has a podcast. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like that's bringing back, like, that old, like you said, old school conversation, like, and meaningful conversations. Like, I feel like we at least, at least try on this podcast, to, like, have somewhat of a meaningful conversation. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. you know, we'll joke around a little bit too, but, like, I feel like we're trying to, like, have some meaning behind what we're saying or what we're talking about. You know what yeah, I mean? absolutely. Um, so, so I think that's important. Yeah, so kind of looking into the future, like, what's next for you? Uh, in the music uh-huh. world? anywhere so i have a shitload of songs um I'm trying to my marker boards right here with all of them on it like <laughs> a shitload of songs in all right now um so it's just going to be putting out like originally this past summer i was supposed to be doing two tours which would have been cool but um it is nice now it's it's a little bit of a relief not having to focus on tour um just because nobody's doing it like you know being a musician and like if I'm not touring and somebody else is, you kind of feel like you're missing out on an opportunity or missing out on growing your fan base. But now that no one's touring, like it's kind of a relief where I'm like, all right, I'm not missing shit if I'm not on the road. Um, But uh, yeah, just like, it's going to be a shitload of content for the rest of the year. Like at very least, it's going to be a new song every month, if not two songs a month. Um, I started doing these, uh, I call them visualizers, but they're pretty much like minute long videos. They're like a mini music video. Um, so I've been putting those out with every new song release, um, which they've been, they've been doing well. Um, just visual content is so much more engaging than just, you know, staring at like a, you know, single cover of a new song or whatever. Um, so yeah, new songs, um, visualizers for like every single song that's going to be coming out for the remainder of the year. Um, and then once waves radio gets up and running, which will hopefully be here in the next like two weeks or so, um i'll have new podcasts coming out i don't know how often i'll kind of have to feel it out and gauge but yeah new podcasts new videos um i'm trying to think what else new merch drops just pretty much digital content like a motherfucker because i can't tour so um, well that that's what's gonna win I f- yeah, yeah whoever can do that best is gonna win i feel like yeah for sure and one thing that's cool too like not being able to tour it's cool because now I can build my social media. I can grow my fan base. I can grow my Spotify numbers. So then once touring comes back around, it's almost like I'm in like double as good of a position 
Um, you know, whether it's headlining shows or whether it's getting on, you know, bigger tours for tour opportunities, I look that much better because not that numbers are everything, but like as the fan base grows and as the numbers increase, it's kind of like a resume builder. It's like getting a job like, OK, yeah. Michael Waves, can we place him on this tour? What is what's his value? What does he have to offer? And like compared to when C Corona first started to next summer, my shit's going to be way more popping. So it's just going to put me in a better position to to uh just get more opportunities mm -hmm. that's great man that's that's, that's really that's good awesome. to hear um i admire yeah. anyone who is you know trying to even in these like times where everyone has to adapt like anyone who's trying to improve their situation i think that's uh yeah very commendable appreciate that man yeah of course but um yeah it was i think this was a great episode we just hit an hour um so, oh, i feel like I feel every one of these we do, like we, we'll hit like an hour, and I feel like it's been like twenty minutes. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, <laughs> um, it's a good conversation. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But thank you so much for coming on, um, taking your time. I know you're obviously really busy with everything you were just talking about, all the digital content. Um, so yeah, I do. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Oh, for Great. sure. I appreciate Thanks. you guys. Wow, oh, this was this was super fun. And I, I'm busy, but I'm not that busy. I always tell that to people like. If I miss like a call, like they'll text, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I know you're busy. It's like, I'm busy, but I'm not that busy to have like a sit -down conversation <laughs> yeah. with somebody. But yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for reaching out. This was super fun. Yeah, of course. Great time. Great time.